everyone, it's Melanie here from, mm, I almost said my old channel name. <laughs> hey guys, it's Melanie. If you're new here, I just wanted to say thank you for stopping by. I do Christian booktube where I talk about Christian books and books that I'm currently reading that are mostly clean or that I decided I wanted to pick up and try. And I'm glad you're here. First up, we have a couple different book hauls that I did that I'm compiling into this one video. They all happened recently. I wanted to separate them not so much in genre or the books necessarily, but in where I got them. I think that's more exciting to kind of give you back history on where I picked up these books and why I picked them up in the first place. Without further ado, let's get started into the books. The first set of books that I got, I got from a local area that I usually go to. The first one I picked up is the If I Run Originally, when I read this series, I read it as a audiobook, and I really want to pick up the entire set. So this is the first book. It's um, in the If I Run series by Terry Blackstock. Incredible series. One of my favorites. YA. I want to have on my bookshelf if I ever want to reread this without having to do the audiobook version. So yeah, I picked up the first one. I can't wait to get the set. Most of the books that I picked up are kind of to complete sets or something along that lines. So you'll see that they're kind of a continuation of what I've already previously held. This one here does not follow suit in that. This is a Frank Pretty book. It is a little bit more worn and used, as you can tell. In great <laughs> style of Frank Peretti, it is a big novel, which is awesome. I love his writing. I get right into it and it sucks me in. He's such a great writer. And to be honest, he's one of my first ever real Christian books that I ever read. And I couldn't believe that there was writers out there that were this talented, that were Christians. He opened my world into Christian reading that I had no idea about before. And he also really encouraged my faith as a writer. So I'm looking into reading more of his work, of course. And when I found this, I was super excited because the cover's a lot nicer than some of his old ones. I have some old books that are like, they need a new update on the covers, that's for sure. I love how he takes certain aspects and realism, but there's this huge underturn of spiritual and godliness like in Christianity that is brought forth in the end that you weren't seeing coming. It's it's quite fascinating how he writes. This one here is about a popular magic act for 40 years um, is tragically separated by a car wreck that claims Mandy's life. Or so everyone thinks. It's really interesting how he plays on things. I can't wait to see how he turns this story into something incredible. He's such a great writer, like really. This book is by Liz Curtis Higgs. She's a great author. I love her work. She has such great faith and I, she's such an encourager to women. This book is very heavy. I don't know why, it's just very heavy and it's like pretty much brand new. It's a historical fiction and also is almost completing the set that I have. I found the other book the other day at a different place and I can't wait to get that book so it would complete this set. So I'm going to go back to that other place to get this book. I'm excited. This is Fair is the Rose. This is the map. And the tagline says, can a sister's love endure the ultimate betrayal? Liz Curtis Higgs writes real life drama in such a beautiful, redemptive, biblical way. So I really appreciate her writing. She talks a lot about real issues, real hurts, real betrayals. Obviously, this one has a betrayal. And she just does it in such a magnificent way. So I'm looking forward to her book. This one here is uh, Terry Blackstock again. She's an incredible mystery suspense author. And this also is part of the Cape Refuge series. I just got the other ones in it. I just picked up these two, which is also part of this set. I think there's one or two more of these. I'll have to look into it. But I'm looking at completing these sets and reading them very soon. This one here is A Southern Storm. First, a dead stranger, now a missing police chief. Did Chief Cade run off to elope, or has he met with foul play? So good, I love her writing, she's incredible, and I can't wait to read this book. I have a lot of Julie Clausen books, but I haven't finished the full amount. I have almost all of her books. This one was missing, and a two or three other ones in my set. So I do wanna read this one. I don't think I have read this one yet, so I'm looking forward to reading this one. I love the cover. I'll just tell you what 
romantic time says in the back just so I don't have to tell you the entire thing here. Clausen has outdone herself with those with this latest novel, her writing is comparable to Jane Austen's. Readers will not be able to put this book down. She's that good. She, I, I just love Julie. Anything that Julie Clausen makes, creates, I read. That good. I love her stuff so much. Her and Melanie Dickerson are my two favorite authors and I will collect all of their books pretty much. <laughs> the next is also to complete a set that I'm working towards. I have not read this book either. This is the Angel Walking series number two book. I have read the first one as an audio and I picked up the hard copy of that one as well. This is Karen Kingsbury and it's Chasing Sunsets. This is very similar to Frank Peretti's books, his first ones, which is like The Prophet, Piercing the Darkness, those ones with, with angels, more of that supernatural sort of style writing and that kind of breaking down the veil between spirits in the form of angels and us and kind of that dynamic between the two. This is kind of a young adult YA version of that, a play on that. Not the same, but a play. I don't really adore a lot of Karen Kingsbury's writing. I'm just not a super huge fan of her writing except for her YA in this form. She does write a lot of really nice thoughts and stuff about her children in the beginning. She always writes like to her kids like to Josh, to EJ, to Austin. It's really sweet seeing that um, and she just really spends a lot of times like on their attributes and how much she loves and adores them. And I also have this one, it's a D. Henderson. These are quite large. When I'm feeling really in the mood for a huge chunky read, I like to pick some of these up, but I also read these as audiobooks as well. Uh, this is not to complete a set, I just wanted to pick it up and read it. It's a D. Henderson book called Full Disclosure. I do believe this is somewhat of a series. I'm not interested in picking up the series, I'm just interested in reading this book. And Silver is a Cop's Cop. As the Midwee's homicide investigator, she is called in to help local law enforcement on the worst of cases, looking for answers to murder. Hers is one of the region's most trusted investigative positions. I love investigation. I love that kind of side of murder mysteries. Like that part is my, that's what I really am intrigued with. I don't really want to go into all of it. It's quite a lot, but it's also just tells me too much and I like to keep a bit of a mystery, you know mystery. So those are all the books that I got from my recent haul at a discounted sort of store. The next ones are going to be from when I went on my trip to Whistler with my cousin. So these books I picked up from that bookstore that you saw in one of my recent videos and yeah I'm gonna share those with you right now. So this I don't believe is a Christian novel, but it really piqued my interest and caught my eye. It's so beautiful. The cover is gorgeous. It's The Perfume Collector, a novel by Kathleen Tessero. I just was really intrigued in by this. I love perfumes. I love elegance. I love anything to do with that kind of lifestyle in a sense because it just intrigues me. I find it very beautiful. This cover was so pretty with that title it just it caught my heart. Publishers Weekly says dazzles the senses is the tag line. An inheritance from a mysterious stranger, an abandoned perfume shop on the left bank of Paris, three exquisite perfumes that hold a memory and a secret. I just love that. So I'm hoping it's clean. I have no idea about this author or anything about this. I just know that I am totally intrigued and so we're going to find out <laughs> if I'm going to like it or not. But uh, yeah, beautiful cover. Another book that is not Christian I also picked up from that bookstore. They didn't have a Christian section in that bookstore like at all. Usually some bookstores will have like a small section. That one had nothing. But this one is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I really was intrigued by this because I saw Jesse the Reader, loved it, was unexpectedly really enjoyed this book. So I wanted to pick this up and just give it a try myself. I'm really hoping it's clean. It's a beautiful cover as well. I love this sort of like style. It reminds me of sort of like Marilyn Monroe esque sort of feel and just that time. And here is what 
US Weekly says, Evelyn Hugo is the glamorous idol you admire, but she's also the relentless fighter you inspire to be. Her life story is heartbreaking yet beautiful and will keep readers captivated until the very last page. Obviously I'm going into this knowing that it's not Christian, it's not going to have the hope of the gospel in it. But I also want to hear the story and to hear um, this take of this story especially. And I think I'm going to be really intrigued by it. It's kind of like an investigative sort of approach because it's written from the story perspective of the reporter, I believe. Yeah, reporter Monique Grant to write her story. We're going to lot, learn a lot about Monique as well. So it's kind of like a dual story and I, I'm really intrigued by this. We'll see how I like it. The last book that I picked up around the same time as I was in Whistler is this one here. It is The Librarian of St. Mallow. I am not a super historical lover in this time period, which is the 1900s, during the time of German War. That isn't my favorite to read, to be very honest. Um, I find it just too heartbreaking, but for some reason this one really intrigued me, um, especially when it's talking about a librarian. I'm like... A sucker for that trope. I think it's, it sounds very beautiful. There's a lot of people saying how gorgeous this book is in the sense of written um, lyrically and, and just beauty. It's a, mis a meticulously researched story recreating actual experiences of the 40, 460 Spanish children who were sent to More Morelia, Mexico in 1937. Devastating, enlightening, and passionately told. That is just, I think, an incredible way to describe this book, and I feel like I will be moved in that same way. So we'll see how that goes. And this one says here to luminous and beautifully researched. So I'm really big on kind of research in sort of books, and for that reason, I feel like this book here will have me captivated enough to continue with the story, even though it's set in the wrong time frame for me. But yeah. Mario Escobar. I'm looking forward to reading this book. It's also done by Thomas Nelson, so I'm hoping there's faith based in here. We shall see. <laughs> Next three books were actually from a great little visit that I had with a great sweet friend that I got to meet up with. I'm really looking forward to sharing these books with you. They were from a bookstore that I love that is near me enough for I, so that I can drive to it. And I love this store. I love it so much. It's one of my favorite places ever. And the Christian, just the atmosphere is just really beautiful. They have a little coffee shop in there. It's just so nice to be able to shop there. Uh, I didn't vlog this one, but I did bring books back to haul with you. So let me just show you those real quick now. First one here, so all these I got discounted. This one here is the Spice King Hope and Glory book one. I'm so glad book one was here because I do want to read the whole series. I'm really excited to read anything from Elizabeth Camden. I've heard so much amazing things about her and I've been wanting to read her books for a very long time. So I can't wait to start this series with book one. I'll just read the last section of this instead of the backdrop of these two. I'll just say, unable to deny her attraction to the reclusive business tycoon, Annabelle will be forced to choose between her heart and loyalty to her country. Can Grey and Annabelle find a way through the storm of scandal without destroying the family Grey is fighting to save? Oh, interesting. Interesting here. I just thought of something. The Spice King. So, Earl Grey mm, is T. And there's a story. There's a background story to the Earl Grey T. I'm wondering if this has anything to do with it. I'm really intrigued now. Hmm. Anyways, like I said, I like the little historical nerdy bits <laughs> and I love tea. So this is right up my alley. The next book I have is the Guardians of Justice series by Irene Hannon. D. Henderson says storytelling at its best. The best selling of Heroes of Quantico. The Fatal Judgment is this book. I love Irene Hannon. She's one of my favorite suspense novelists besides Terry Blackstock. And here's a little tag. It says, full of suspense and romance, Fatal Judgment is a thrilling story that will keep you turning the pages late into the night. I'm sure it will. She's an incredible author. I really, really love her work. I also got this one and I won't say too much about it, but I picked this up because I'm actually doing a giveaway with this one. 
this one's the giveaway. This is the one I just purchased for $6. And I, I'm giving away my copy, so then I wanted to replace it because I love this series so much. So yeah, that's it. Little twinsies here. <laughs> the last book in this haul is this book here. It's a nonfiction book. It's called The Manual to Manhood. How to cook the perfect steak, change a tire, impress a girl, and 97 other skills you need to survive. I'm going to be giving this one to my oldest son, he doesn't know it yet, by Jonathan Catherman. Some of the topics it discussed, and I thought it was so cute, is wear cologne correctly, that's a big one, you know, tie a tie, grill a steak, manage a credit card, plan a date, interview for a job, ask for a reference, clean a bathroom. I've taught these boys that, but, you know, coming from someone else, sometimes it works out better than coming from mom, right? Change a tire, talk to a girl, fold a shirt, clear a sink drain, behave during a traffic stop, throw a football, find a stud in a wall, and tons more. So I think this is going to be great for my son. And yeah, I'm looking forward to giving it to him. I'm hopping in really quickly because I forgot to mention this book here. I did receive it as a book from the author. Her name is Brooke St. James, and this is Two Sisters, Summer at the Beach, Finding Your Soulmate. It's the start of a multi-generational love story. It's called Easy Does It. Um, I have a little write-up of her on the back, and, and actually this book, when they sent it to me, sounded amazing. The premise for the book is quite nice, and I thought I would really like it. However, when they brought the cover, it just, this cover, it doesn't seem like a very good cover. I spoke with the author and I just, the PR person for the author, and just let her know that like, it just doesn't look like a very great novel cover for the premise of this book. It's like a beach read. For example, it says, I always wanted to live at the beach. It had been my dream since I was a little girl. I longed to experience the, set, the sand and sea. My heart's desire was to become a famous artist who paints scenes with palm trees and blue waters. That is not what we get here. So I'm struggling to want to read this book now because of the cover. I think that the story itself, it says it's a Christian book. I think that it's going to be really nice. I just really hope that they end up redoing this cover. So I'm going to add this into the book haul. I hope that I get to it, uh, but I'm not going to lie. This is definitely throwing me off the cover. I totally forgot about it earlier and uh, <laughs> probably because of the cover. Oh. Unfortunately, I'm totally being a bad judger of the book right now by its cover. Like I'm being so cliche, but I... It's, it's tough not to. So uh, hopefully I'm going to read it because I, I promised I would. But I think the story might be really good. So we'll see how that goes. So that is it for this book haul. I hope that you enjoyed it. On my little adventures, I just wanted to take you along with me and show you a little bit of the books that I got. And I hope that you enjoy it. If you're looking for another video, you can check out my recent one where I show you all the winners for the six year anniversary of being on booktube. Thank you for again for visiting and for you that are new if you want and wish to subscribe if you like this content please do and hit the notification to all so you get all of the content when it comes out. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next video. Bye! Here. Thanks for stopping in and enjoying the video with me. Blech. That was stupid. <laughs> um, a magic act that are, uh, and, um, yeah. Uh, so, <coughs> <coughs> why do I cough on my own spit? I don't know. Oh man. Yeah, there's a beautiful map in here though. That was a really heavy sneeze. There must be dust on these. <laughs> um, by Elizabeth Candon. And it doesn't, I wish they would give like little captions because I don't want to read the entire thing here. Oh, the tag is stuck on it. The last book in this haul, oh, I'll start over again.